Emma, couldn't have the planned such a late day without you, and Claire appreciates all the support uh, today. Thank you for leading up to it as well. My not as glamorous but still reasonably attractive groomsmen as well, <laughs> Ben, Sean, and Aaron, and my best man Simon for all the help uh, they've given me leading up to today as well. Um, so we just uh, raise a toast to the uh, groomsmen and the uh, bridesmaids as well. Groomsmen and bridesmaids. Yeah. You've got the microphone a bit too close. <laughs> so before I um, shower Claire with all the compliments and love, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, appreciate some of the absent people that can't be with us today. For me, there's my nan, June, and my granddad, Tony, who I think would have really enjoyed being here today. And also, I know for Claire, there's her granny, who was uh, fondly known by everyone as Granny Mather, and her grandma, Margaret, and granddad, George, who I know they were very close. And then, of course, very close to the family's hearts is uh, Claire's dad, James. Uh, I didn't get the chance to meet James, obviously, but um, I know um, from all the stories Jackie and Claire have said over the years, they always uh, talk about him with a big smile on their faces. So I can appreciate that he must have been a, an amazing man and father. And I'm sure if he was here today, he'd be very proud of the woman Claire has become. And uh, you'll notice uh, there is a table next to the cake for absent friends, which uh, has the names of everyone who can be here. So could we all just uh, raise a toast to absent friends? Absent friends. Okay. So um, I think, one of the reasons why Claire and I are so good together, apart from being like a power couple and amazingly attractive, <laughs> is uh, the values that we both would have got from our parents. So for me, mum and dad, they raised a uh, very attractive, funny, <laughs> charismatic and humble son. <laughs> so congratulations to that. Um, but uh, on a serious note though, growing up, you always showed me a lot of support and it's kept me grounded, even when I make crazy decisions like moving from Somerset to Aberdeen. Um, if, for that support, I wouldn't have been able to meet Claire. And I know for Claire, she received a very similar loving background um, with James and Jackie, who have taught her the values that makes her such an amazing woman who I'm in love with today. So, speaking of Claire and being lovely, <laughs> pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the, um, You've already heard the brief story of how we met, our oh, plenty of fish. Um, but wasn't, what wasn't said was uh, obviously Claire was one of many women to talk to me on that side. <laughs> um, just to clarify, it wasn't just Claire necessarily. Um, but yeah, she was the only one to uh, reply, thinking that was absolutely hilarious. Say, uh, yes, I would like a date. So shortly after uh, chatting on uh, plenty of fish, we met up in uh, Aberdeen, at six degrees north. Um, she walked in and it was, not to be too cheesy, but it was like a romantic mo uh, moment when she walked in and I was like, wow, there she is. But luckily for me, I had a bit of, uh, bit of time to compose myself because her glasses steamed up. And, uh, <laughs> she couldn't see a thing. She couldn't see me coming there. So I was like, walked up and then she had no time to turn around and walk out. And she was, uh, it was too late. So uh, once the fog cleared from your glasses, we then proceeded to go get a drink and then take the mick out of each other's accents. On my nervous dear, very worried. Quite <laughs> and luckily, taking the mick out of each other's accents and just mick out of each other seems to work for us. So um, after that, I sh or shortly after that, I did ask you to uh, be my girlfriend, and it was over some onion rings. However. It was after me gallantly for fighting for your onion rings because they left them off the mill. And that was a kind of boyfriend protector I wanted to be. <laughs> and I did manage to get the onion rings. So, no wife of mine will go without. <laughs> I will promise you. So um, from there, we, uh, I moved to Oxford, went for a long distance, which was tough, seven hour drives, to eventually moving in with each other in Newcastle. And uh, that's where we've been ever since. But it didn't really matter where I was uh, or the amount of time I had to drive. I knew we were going to be together. And that's what made it all very easy. So one of the other reasons I think why we get on so well is uh, Claire's slightly quirky personality. 
<laughs> I think most people here would agree. She usually has uh, bright hair, she likes a party, it's quite social. I'm not so social, I'm a little bit judgy sometimes, but Claire is very kind and always uh, expects the best out of people, always sees the kindness, and we balance each other out, I think, very well. Her favourite term is to call me judgy, we judge it, isn't it, sometimes? But I think I've improved a lot. So I think we balance each other out really well. I keep you calmer, you get me a bit more... A bit more. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't do that. And, actually, but, uh, and then, uh, yeah, don't just uh, be so relaxed all the time. I think, is what I'm to say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I do honestly today, um, standing next to you now, I feel like the luckiest person in the world to have met you and make the decision to go to Aberdeen and find you. Um, can't wait to uh, spend the rest of my life with you and uh, see what kind of interesting accents our kids will have one day. <laughs> um, a mix of uh, somerset Scottish, Geordie, twang it would be very <laughs> interesting. I think. So on that note, I love you. And please, Claire, will you raise a toast to my gorgeous wife, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Simon is allowed out a few times a year. <laughs> and he's been known to exaggerate. <laughs>